Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be making a clinical survival guide just to inform you on what to expect at your first semester of x-ray school. So let's get started. I feel like it's only appropriate to explain what evals and comps are before I get to um, what sh you should need and stuff like that, just because those two things are going to be vital for clinical, so it's important that you understand what they are. And each school is going to be different, so I'm just talking on behalf of my school. So essentially what an eval is, an evaluation, is every single week in lab, you're going to learn a new body part and you're going to learn a new projection and a new position. So you're going to practice that week. Um, let's, for instance, let's say this week I did knee and I did tip fib. So the next week, which is going to be Thursday, I will go into lab and I will eval on tip fib and knee. So what it is, is we have a mock x-ray room in our campus and it has a functioning x-ray tube, all that stuff. So, and we also have phantom dolls, which are like, if you x-ray it, you'll be able to see like if you were in the clinical site on a real patient. So that's what you're gonna be doing. You're gonna be setting up your phantom doll for whatever uh, body part you're doing that week. And you're gonna run it through as if you were at the clinical site. You're gonna tell your CI, which is your clinical instructor, what you're doing as you're doing it. So you're telling her, oh, I'm centering at this for my central ray. I'm collimating an inch around. I'm setting up my technique. I'm measuring, I'm shielding, stuff like that. So that's what your CI is gonna do. And she's gonna see if you're competent enough to bring those skills to clinical. Now you cannot go to clinical and comp on something if you did not pass your eval in lab. So that's why it's really important that you have to hunker down and study and practice. So when your eval comes and you have to eval on it, you know what you're doing and you're competent enough and you can bring that golden ticket, that stamp of approval to clinical so you can comp on it. So now I'm gonna go into comps. What a comp is, is you pass your eval in lab and you're ready to bring that, you know, stamp of approval, golden ticket to clinical, and that lets your CI at your clinical site or the techs at your clinical site that you can perform this procedure on a real life patient. Now, that doesn't mean that they're just gonna walk away from the room and you're sitting there to deal with it yourself. You're gonna be watched, you're gonna be supervised, so there's nothing to worry about. Um, comps are definitely more scary than evals because in an eval, you're working on phantom dolls, so you don't have to worry if the patient's hurting a certain way, if you're, you know, maneuvering them and stuff like that. So comps, this it's the real world. You know, everything that you learn in lab, everything that you read in your Merrill's book, sometimes you throw out the window because in the clinical setting, it's completely different. People are hurting, people are in pain, people are sick. So you kind of have to learn to adjust your abilities as a tech and go from there. So yeah, that's what a comp is. Um, you have to get a certain amount of comps every single semester. So I'm in my second semester of my first year of x-ray school. So we have, I think it's 14 comps. So it's 10 of upper and lower extremities mixed together. And we also have four of continuing comps, which is basically just to brush up what you learned last semester and make sure that you didn't forget how to do a chest and how to do an abdomen. So yeah, that's basically what evals and comps are. They're crucial to your two years or however long your program is. If you don't get any comps, then you're not gonna pass your clinical aspect of your classes and no one wants to do that. So it's very important that you're diligent and you make sure that you're on top of your positioning and um, basically your typical patient care stuff. So yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to get into the essentials of what you need for clinical. So if you guys see me like looking down here, I actually wrote down a couple stuff because I didn't want to forget um, anything as I was going over it. So we're going to start with the first one because you'll notice real quick once you pass your first eval and you're able to bring that to the clinical site and comp on it, um, you have to use lead markers, which are these little bad boys right here. Um, 
And yeah, uh, what they don't tell you is they don't stick to the bucky if you're doing a chest x-ray or if you're doing anything in general, like they're gonna fall off if it's like upright or anything like that. So it's very crucial that I put down that you need radhesive. So what that is, I'm gonna use this one. So essentially what radhesive is, is a little sticky thing in the back. It kind of looks like tape and you're able to stick it to the board with no problem whatsoever. And I like, th I prefer this better than using tape because using tape, it takes too long. So I remember my first chest x-ray that I was doing, I didn't have radhesive, didn't have any of the tack that you could also use too for your markers. And I just felt like I was taking too much time. And I was like, this patient is literally standing up while I'm trying to tape my marker to the Bucky. So I was like, I need to hurry it up. So I was trying to find stuff that I can use so I can stick it to the board easy and quick. And this is something that I found. So rad adhesive is definitely something that you should get. So the next one that I have is a retractable badge reel. So I have this because you can just, you know, put it right here on your scrub and you can easily go like that to the board. You can stick it to the bucky real quick and there's no fumble. So if you have your badge like right here or you have it like down here, you know, you're kind of like awkwardly trying to get your like marker off or you're like down here trying to get your marker off. I find it easier to just have like a badge reel so I can just go quick and you know, it's all about body mechanics. You know, you're, you're moving freely. You're able to get the procedure done quickly and efficiently to what it needs to be. Uh, let's see, what's the next one that I have? Okay, so obviously you want to keep everything that I'm talking about in one special place. So I just have a regular backpack. Just get yourself, you gotta go to Walmart, you gotta go wherever you gotta go. Just go and get yourself a backpack because in that way you can put all of your studying materials, you can keep your badge in there, you can keep little snacks, stuff like that. So you're not like having your pockets full of stuff and you're like fumbling around like, oh my God, where's this, where's that? It's all there readily accessible and you can put it in a locker or put it in somewhere where it's not gonna be in the way of anything. Another thing that I have is <laughs> you are going to be there from eight to four or whatever your clinical rotation is for your school. Mine's is eight to four. So you're going to want comfortable shoes. So I put down, get yourself some comfortable shoes. My school, we need all white and they weren't really picky if you needed leather shoes or not. So I just picked these because when I used to work like 10 hour shifts at my job, like the Dito's ones were so good and comfy for my feet. So I was like, why not get one for clinical? So that's exactly what I got. It has like this meshy material. Oh geez, they're a little dirty. I gotta clean them. But it has like this meshy material. And I like for my feet to be breathable and I can like move around freely without like having to deal with like leather restricting my foot from like air and stuff like that. But um, yeah, if your school allows you to have non-leather shoes, that's great. But I just prefer those. If they get dirty, I'll clean them or I'll just buy new ones. Like it's not really a big deal compared to like leather. You can like easily clean it or whatever. Not really a big stickler on that. But uh, yeah, get yourself some comfortable shoes because honey, you're gonna be going eight hours straight, running around, doing this, doing that pulling stretchers, doing this, doing that. So you're gonna wanna make sure that your feet are attended to appropriately and make sure you have something comfortable to survive for your eight hour shift, okay? Next thing that I have on the list is some compression socks. Compression socks, compression socks, people. I got white because my school said it, said that we needed white socks, so I didn't go out and get, you know, pink or like red socks just cause they were gonna show when I moved, so. Um, yeah, I highly recommend compression socks because they reduce your feet's fatigue and that's exactly what you don't want. So for instance, last semester I had clinical Thursday, Friday, and I worked Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So right out of clinical at four o'clock, I would race to my other job, change into my uniform, and like if you're not wearing compression socks, my feet would literally be be killing me because I would work from eight to four for clinical and then from like 4.30 to 10 o'clock at night, I would be at my job. So my I was on my feet literally all day. So 
if you don't have um, compression socks, your feet are gonna be killing you. And I really do feel like they do help my feet because when I'm done with my eight to four uh, rotation at clinical, my feet aren't like killing me or anything like that. They feel fine, obviously a little bit fatigued because you're running around doing everything. But um, other than that, like I highly recommend them because like I said, if you're not used to doing eight to four in a hospital, it's different than working, you know, your, your 10 hour shift at, uh, retail because I thought if I can do a 10 hour, 12 hour shift in retail, I can do an eight hour shift in the hospital. Uh, try again, honey. It's a completely different atmosphere and you'll understand once you get into it. All right. So the next one that I have on the list is getting yourself a hydro flask, getting yourself anything that's like this, that's going to be well insulated. I fill mine up with water and ice so I'm not like drinking some warm water because I don't like that. Um, but yeah, you're going to want to keep hydrated and stuff like that. Because like I said, you're going to be moving patients. There's some patients that are going to be able to move for you. And there's some that you're going to have to move yourself with lifting help, of course. But um, yeah, if you're hydrated and you're keeping, you know, yourself replenished, that's going to be good because no one wants to pass out during clinical because there have been many instances where I was like, give me a second because I feel like I'm going to pass out. And that's because I didn't eat and <laughs> I didn't drink water. So I learned my lesson and I started packing myself snacks and packing myself water, which leads on to my next uh, hack is bringing yourself a little snack or something. Um, so I get up at 6.30 in the morning and I am definitely not a morning person and I don't like um, eating breakfast in the morning either. I usually have my first meal around 11 o'clock. So um, obviously if my rotation starts from 8 to 4, you know, I can't just be like, oh, hold on guys, let me go to the cafeteria and get myself some breakfast. No, if you're in a clinical site, professional setting, you need to, you know, be responsible and make sure that you did that before you came into your 8 to 4. So that's exactly why I pack myself snacks. Pack yourself a Nutri-Grain bar, pack yourself a Belvita cracker, whatever it is to hold you off until you get your lunch break. And I say this because there have been times where I just drink my coffee in the morning and then I go from 8 to 12 without eating anything. And when I tell you when 12 o'clock rolls around for us to go on our lunch break, I'm literally like dying. I'm like, I'm going to pass out. I can't believe I did that procedure. Like, I just, you know, because when you're in the clinical setting and you have a difficult patient, that difficult patient may pop up at 1130 and you're spending, you know, 20 minutes on it and you haven't eaten anything for the for that morning. And, you know, you're feeling a little woozy. You know, you may have to step out for a few seconds. So that's something you want to make sure that you have your Nutri-Grain bar, your Belvedere cracker, whatever snack, quick and easy there is pack it in your bag so when you're feeling like you're a little lightheaded or you need something like a little fuel in your system you can just eat it real quick and you know you don't have to worry about it my next one is medicine oh my goodness medicine medicine so um there have been multiple times where i've had pounding headaches at clinical and i haven't had anything to help me with it. No ibuprofen, no Advil, no none of that. And I'm sitting there for my eight to four and I'm like, wow, I wish I would have packed myself like a Tylenol or something like that. So I would recommend packing yourself like a little travel tube, you know, maybe pop a couple Advils in there or something like that. So in the event that you do have a headache, you're not regretting your whole eight to four because what are you, what are you going to do? You know, you have a headache, it's in your bag, grab your bag, take an Advil, whatever it is and just move on from there. Okay, let's see. Studying materials. I recommend bringing something to study, whether that's printing out PowerPoint slides, if your professor professor does that, or uh, making flashcards, or just going over like your, you get this in your bundle, but just going over your like pocket guide so you can see like where essential rays and stuff, or like what techniques you can use. Just going over that because the last thing you want to do is on your downtime at clinical is sit there and 
be on your phone or be unproductive and just sit there and look like you're miserable your whole time. If you're practicing, let's say you just learned ankle or something and you bring someone else in the room so you can practice where your central ray goes and stuff like that, that's acceptable on your downtime. Or if you just need to go over studying materials, you know, you have a test next week and you just want to bring a couple flashcards and study on your downtime. That's fine, but it's not acceptable to be on your phone. It's not acceptable to be sitting there like you're half asleep in a chair. Because remember, this is a professional setting and it could be a potential of employment once you graduate. I've talked to many techs that have said that this was their original clinical site and once they graduated they got hired at their clinical site so you know it's as everyone says it's a year-long job interview and if you're on your phone if you're not picking up cases if you're looking like you're miserable if you don't want to learn no one's going to want to hire someone like that and remember it's a hospital system so no matter if that clinical site you completely bombed and then you go to another clinical site you know, they may have the low and talk to each other like, oh yeah, do not uh, hire this person because they were horrible as a first year um, x-ray student. So yeah, you just want to keep in mind, make sure you're attentive, make sure that you have your studying materials, you know, make sure that you're productive. You know, it's clinical, it's a professional setting, you should want to be there because you are paying thousands of dollars to be there. <laughs> okay, let's see what else we have here. Um, other than that, I don't have anything else written down. So I'm just going to go over the do's and don'ts at clinical because you'll be surprised. Um, some people just don't know. Um, you want to have a watch too, because there have been multiple times where I've been in the clinical setting and I need to see what time it is or I need to know what the date was. I need to confirm whatever it was. So um, I wear my Apple Watch. My school, thankfully, is not strict on having an Apple Watch. Um, uh, but I'm, you're not going to see me there like scrolling through my text messages, you know, going through it and stuff like that. So, you know, use it with respect. If you have to, you know, dire emergency, check your phone for whatever reason during your eight to four rotation at clinical, I would suggest going to the bathroom. And if you have to respond real quick and then get back out there and see what exams are dropping because like I said, you don't want to sit there and be on your phone because it's a bad look for you. And um, it, it could be the difference between getting hired after you're graduating or not getting hired when you graduate. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Uh, also, another thing, this is very important, um, and I feel like I struggled with this in the beginning, learn to have a backbone for yourself, but don't be rude if that makes sense, okay? So, like, you will come across multiple attacks, and they're going to teach you valuable information that you're going to keep for the rest of your life. And there's going to be some texts out there that are not going to be uh, willing to give you the information that you may want. You know, there's going to be other texts that are willing to teach you, sit down with you, tell you what this is, tell you what that is. And then you'll work with other texts that are just going to be like, okay, I'm just going to do it myself because I don't want to waste time. And it's going to be like that. And you know, you just have to brush it off your shoulder. Or if you're doing an exam and you mess something up and the tech like maybe comes off a little rude or yells at you, brush it off your shoulder. If it's something that's completely like extraneous, then I would definitely go to your CI and talk to them about it. But um, yeah, sometimes it feels like they have the mentality of like mother eats their young is how I constantly say it. Because it's like, we're students and we all were students at one time or another. So I feel like there's no need to like just be like, oh, fend for yourself, figure it out for yourself. In some cases, you have to do that in order to learn. But when you are, you know, fresh off the press, first year, first semester, you're going to be asking a lot of questions. You're going to mess up and you're going to need someone there for you who's going to be able, okay, this is how we can fix this. This is how, you know, we're not going to prevent this from from happening again, okay? Yeah, um, I'm planning on making a video that pertains to lecture. So this is like just a clinical aspect of the first semester. So I want to be able to make another uh, lecture one. So stay tuned for that. But um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you take the things that I said um, with you in case you decide 
that you wanna buy the same things or whatever not. Um, just double check with your school and see what they require because like I said, like for the shoes for instance, some, some schools want leather shoes, some schools you can't wear Apple watches, etc, etc. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and as always, I love reading your guys' comments, so comment and stay tuned, I might respond to it. So yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.